לעצמי, אוקיי. in certain circumstances. We've all had to deal with our insecurities at one time or another. So, so yeah. the question again was about telling me a time that you felt shame and wanted to disappear. Mm. Yeah, I want to jump in on this one. So a while back, I started to want to work in the field of fatherhood. And so, you know, there's always a party or a conf- at the conference, you're getting this lesson. So everybody got together. And I'm typically... Um, the female in the room, right? And I remember sitting at the table with like 10 guys and me. And at the time I was working in healthy marriage and I said to them, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to work in fatherhood. And I was like, this is what I've studied. This is what I know. And it was one guy there that had worked with me. Like he was like, Avis, I know you can do it. One guy took a text on me for about 20, 30 minutes. They was having drinks, smoke cigars. I mean, he ripped me up and down. How you gonna do it? What you gonna do? Take something another man came up with? Mm. He was just going and going. And I, you know, I'm spunky, but I was like, so I was like, no, nah, I'm gonna have my own idea. Like, I, I like think this is what I'm supposed to do. And I got my own idea. He was like, yeah, right. You can't do it. And he was high up. You know, this is a guy that's this high up in the field, well-respected. Um, And I just sat there and, and I, I was quiet for a minute. And so I got a text that was like, why are you quiet? And mm. I'm like, say something. And mm. I never did. I just walked mm. away from the table that night, but I was so determined. I was like, and as soon as I got the push in the field, he was the first person I called. I was like, how you doing? Yeah, I'm a program director of a fatherhood <laughs> program now, okay? Just right. want to let you know, right? Yeah. And then, but I knew that even when I was working, that was driving me to be better and do better and work harder, which is so dysfunctional, right? Because yeah. I knew the sources that this is what I'm supposed to do. But then I took on this mask, like I'm gonna be flawless at it, you know, yeah. like I'm never gonna mess anything up. And so in those times, um, while they seem very negative, at the same time, it was very positive because it made me study harder. And now I'm just so skilled at it because of that negativity. Yeah. And now he like doing something else, so. Yeah. But that's wow. the thing. Words can build or break you down. You know, some words and labels will, 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 will cause a person to wear them, put them on every day, sleep with them, take them every place they go. And some labels will cause you to strive to be the opposite of what someone said you are, right? Um, and and right. I still have that, that challenge sometimes. I, I, when, I remember a comment. I used to sing. I used to do musical theater. I still sing now. But I used to be a singer, I think, <laughs> even if I'm only in my mind and in the shower. But someone <laughs> made a comment when I was, I was, I had performed, everybody loved it. When the person found out I was singing, they said, you're not a singer. Why were you on my stage singing? Wow. For the next 10 years, I dared not hum out loud. Wow. And when I finally did a play in which I had no words, my whole, every scene I showed up in, I had to sing a song. Wow. I had set up bronchitis. Yeah. And when, and when I get off stage, they'd have a pillow waiting for me to cough into. Do you know the person who said I couldn't sing showed up to the theater one night? I didn't know they were there. And afterwards, they came to me and said, I am so sorry. You're not a gospel singer. You're a jazz singer. I just couldn't hear it. You can sing. And I wept as a grown woman. I wept wow. and he held me. Now that doesn't happen all the time. You don't always get to hear somebody say, I'm sorry, but it's kind of like you, Avis. That person propelled you and they're not even in the game, in the field that you were in. in. Let, me, let me segue. I know that a bunch of you could probably jump in on that, but I want to kind of, because Avis talked about uh, the field that she's in with men, I really want to jump into this, the difference between male vulnerability and female vulnerability, because I believe we're going to set some people free out there. I believe those that are listening, those women that are listening and the men that are listening, they'll be able to kind of relate to this. So 
in our book club, we've discussed the differences between female armor and male armor as it relates to vulnerability. I'd like to hear from a few of you. I want you to share on some of the differences you've noticed either in relationship, as a parent, or even in your place of employment. Um, how men are taught to handle vulnerability and then how do we as women suppress their vulnerability and then how can we facilitate them feeling safe enough to share? So any one of those areas, I want you to kind of jump in. Yeah, I'll, I'll jump in. Um, and I, I think it's interesting, um, the culture that we live in, I don't think it, it's, it's um, unique to the American culture. I think it, that code transcends um, borders, right, in terms of how we raise our men versus how we raise our girls, um, you know, boys and our girls or women and, and men and, and how they adapt as they emerge into who they are. And it's particularly um, interesting in the workplace. We've talked about this in our book club. In meetings, you know, are we allowed to cry as women? You know, you know, I, I've personally been relegated to the bathroom or closed door offices to, to show my emotion. Yeah. And I've also been um, the recipient of maybe unwanted attention or um, just an unwanted um, response when I have been vulnerable to mm -hmm. folks and um, feeling shame or guilt or just embarrassment that maybe I made that miscalculation or um, just in the, you know, that indiscretionary um, approach in, in that conversation. So I've had to deal with that. I've had to walk back, okay, what could I have done differently? What should I have done differently? And then it leads into mistrust. Well, I don't know who to trust, right? Mm -hmm. um, and so then we put this mask on again. So it's this constant like cycle, you know, mm -hmm. that I found myself in. And then I see the difference with men. Like if I were in a meeting and I saw a man break down and cry, what would be my response? I think it's about context, but I have been privileged to have relationships with both male and female supervisors who I've um, witnessed vulnerability and I, I can say, I really think it, it depends on the individual and their values and how they lead. And if they kind of set foot in and in, in present themselves and you know where their values are, I think it's easier to accept them in their raw state. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Well, if uh -huh. you don't mind, I can jump in there on that one too. I think um, I've been blessed to have two daughters. And so, although I might have thought I made it to a place where I understood something. There's nothing like having kids to kind of teach you that you don't <laughs> and that you need to keep learning, right? Um, and so being a life learner has become a, a really big part of life for me. But as it relates to men and women and just those differences, um, I can relate to Sharon, you know, when you're in leadership, um, yeah, you are supposed to be tough. You're supposed to be this. And so like now we're in COVID times, right? Mm -hmm. So if my child's school isn't open, and I'm needing to not only drop my child off with someone in a COVID time where you're concerned about what who may, you know, someone may or may not have. Mm -hmm. Then you go to work and you need to put on your mask, so to speak, because you need to put that in a category or compartment. It's not really something to discuss because you have the same role as a man. And if you can't handle it, you shouldn't have the role, right? <laughs> um, that, that, that's really going to be the, the thought behind it. And so not only that, you then become responsible for the weight that other people I won't say responsible, but you have to be sensitive to the way that other people are, are carrying as well as they navigate those times. So I say that to say, no, you can't cry, even if you are a little un un unnerved in front of people. If you do, it's going to be received a certain way. Um, but at the same time, the funny part about it for me is if you're too tough, if you're too yeah. strong, if you're too masculine, Hey. That's even worse. And that's the stereotypical image of a black manager, leader, supervisor, what have you. Yes. So if you're too masculine, oh, that's terrible. Who wants to work for her? Here she comes. And there's a word that they usually attach oh, to yes. it. But if you are too feminine, too soft, too vulnerable, see, she doesn't need to have this position because she's not strong enough. Her emotions are all over the place. So mm -hmm. there leaves a huge question mark. And I say it doesn't just exist there because then you have to transition into a home. Yeah. And if you add the spiritual components of submission, it's yes. the spiritual components of what wife mm -hmm. material is. Yes. 
there's a whole nother mess to deal with or a whole nother conversion. So if you're Avis and you feel like I know my place, I know what mm -hmm. I'm on this earth to do. Mm -hmm. I know I can help, right? Yes. And you're raising girls and you want them to be resilient and have resolve. Right. But how does that fit then in the spiritual home where you don't know, you, you won't need to wear that mask or in a Free professional time. life? Free so time. it leaves a lot of questions. It leaves questions and it, it leaves a, a, a confusion because yeah. you, you, you have to be strong at your job, but don't be too strong. Right. You have to be vulnerable, but don't be too vulnerable. And yeah. then you want to, you want to give an example to, especially if you're raising girls, you want to give an example of what it looks like to be strong because they're going to have to go in the world and the world is not going to be nice and accepting and inviting saying, Oh, you can be however you want to be. They're not going to do that. So you have to, you have to mirror that for them to be able to follow that example. And yeah. then at the same time, those wifey titles, <laughs> you know, the, the, we, we have to do that whole, the submission thing. And it's not a chore to do it. It's just, we want to be able to be more than one dimensional because we aren't one dimensional beings. Yeah. And, but, but it's, it's almost taboo to be, to show up as the beautiful peacocks we actually are. Right. We would blow somebody's mind. It's kind of like God, <laughs> if he showed us all he wants to do with us, mine would be blown instantly. Right. So he can't even right. show us the tadpole, let alone even the tail of a tadpole to blow our mind. Um, Monica, I'm gonna let you jump in on, on this, uh, about the differences between of course, male and females and vulnerability. Yeah. I even want to think like even in relationships. So I had wanted to grab my book real quick because it was this really it was a quote I had highlighted in my book that I just love when it says um, talking to couples and seeing how shame creates one of the dynamics that's most lethal to relationships. Mm -hmm. Like we talk about what's lethal to like relationships and marriage mm -hmm. and the book talks about how shame. So it goes on to say women feel shame when they don't feel heard or validated. Yes. Men in turn feel shame when they feel criticized for being inadequate and either shut down or come back with anger. Ooh, and yes. that is to me, Ooh. like that's everything. Like yes. it's once understanding that I feel like my marriage got stronger because I realized that sometimes the things that when he shuts down or when he gets angry, it's not necessarily because he's angry. It's because I made him feel like a certain way, a certain kind of way. Like if I say, you know, if I'm saying something about the garbage, be, not going out at a certain time, it's not that he's angry that I brought it up. He's angry that it's almost as if I'm saying he can't do it properly. Right. Or he's not right. doing it right or yeah. adequately. Yeah. For men, that's everything. That feeling of like, you know, that especially as the head of a household, like yes. that that's that's respect. a huge part for them. You, respect, you know, is a number one rule for men. Yeah. Feel respected and you've got to show them that respect. That mm -hmm. will annihilate everything. And if the way we say it, if 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 you didn't move too quick, you know, and you know how we get. If you don't do it when I tell you to do it, it's almost like, let me do it myself. And even though we can do it, that's not the way to actually show yourself in a, in a place where you're actually allowing them to do what it is you've asked them to do in a timely fashion that is conducive for who? Them, right? Mm -hmm. Sharon, I see your hand raised. Let me go ahead and hear from you. And Monica, yeah. you answered yours, I think. So early in the book, if you remember, she talked about the your kitchen table self, right? Yeah, and if yeah. you think about our lives, like we all yep. have a kitchen table version of who we are, but I find myself, and I think you can relate, there's a constant um, process of assessing the room that you're in, the space that mm -hmm. you're in. Okay, I'm in this room, I need to bring this person. I'm in this space, I need to bring this sharing. Mm -hmm. And so it's tiring, it's messy. Right, vulnerability, it's not cookie cutter. And I, I think we're striving to find this peacock self, as you described it more, where you can mm -hmm. show up in all your glory. But I, I feel, you know, and, and, I, and I hear the spirit behind what you're saying, but it's, it's, it's not easy, right? It takes courage to be that person. It takes courage to, to know and to calculate, okay, how many feathers on my plume can I really show today? Because the reality is we would like to think we're in a world where everybody loves and accepts us, right? 
um, but not everybody can handle the kitchen table versions of who we are. And so mm -hmm. I feel like part of that tiring is the constant assessing of who can I bring to the room today? But there's also that element of, of being courageous, right? Being brave enough to be it, like we heard in this Amanda Gorman poem, you know, yes. being brave enough to see it, but being brave enough to be who we yes. are created to be. Yeah. Yes, uh, excellent, good. excellent, excellent points. Because, and, 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 and I have a question that I'm gonna bring up after I allow everybody to ask on this, that talks about what, it, what it's like when you bring something to someone who isn't able to handle all that you bring. You know, so we're going to get get into that a little bit more, because I think that's another part of why we're tired or exhausted, mm -hmm. because you are doing you're not just doing the job of wife, of mother, of employee or boss, but you're doing the, the housekeeping. You're the chef. You're the, the grocery shopper. You're the it's it's a it's so many hats yes. and people don't know why they're so tired. Yeah. You're tired because while you're doing yeah. all of those. Yeah. Each room, you got to remember the red mask goes in this situation, the blue mask in this one, the brown mask is here, the orange mask yeah. is here, the white mask is here. So you are, your brain never shuts off. Yeah. Right, right, Even right. when you're asleep, you're thinking about what you got to do tomorrow, what you didn't get done today. Uh, who else I, I really want to jump in on this and, and, and to particularly say how much more difficult, and you guys know how much I am about our African-American people, but how much more difficult is this for the black man that mm -hmm. has, to, because his anger becomes elevated, right? Mm -hmm. If he's angry somewhere, now he's threatening and yeah. now mm -hmm. he's, he's going to kill someone, you know, mm -hmm. when he's just displaying that, you know, I'm mad right now, right? Mm -hmm. And so how much more different and how our families look different because they're not it's not the same dynamic right and so uh really learning that and really growing I think and and like you're saying learning the mask it mm -hmm. is very exhausting it is very confusing but I think when when you do come home home has to be the place that mm -hmm. I can just be who I am right mm -hmm. um and I'm grateful for this group because this group displays that too I'm always looking forward to Saturday to say yep like if I can't do it anywhere else like if I've been stifled on the job I'm like wait to Saturday wait to Saturday <laughs> I could just boom <laughs> and it's all good right <laughs> um but but in your home you've got to create a space in your home so that when you come home and take your your shoes off or whatever and now we're working from home but when you come out your office space I get to be who I am yeah. and I get to just relax in that yeah. and, and it takes if you live with other people if you have a husband and children and all that you got to figure that out for everybody too um but I always say to everybody in my household to my children okay you got to learn a new me I switched yeah. my game up the new me coming through you better catch me <laughs> Love it. Look, but that is also you know I have a phrase that I often say you know there are three rules in any household in any relationship uh, the first thing people want to know, and this is if you're dating, if you're married, if you're raising kids, you know, three things. One, who's in control? Two, are there any rules? And three, are they going to be enforced? Because if you say you're in control and you let people run, wreak havoc in your life, then are you really in control? Two, if you say you have rules and, and, and you do not abide by the rules or uh, ensure that others abide by the rules, then you're really not in charge and nobody respects you. That's why the third one is so important. You have to have all three of those things in order to have order. And so you setting the, setting the stage for, hey, I got somebody new showing up. That's one, I'm giving you notice. <laughs> Two, I'm letting you know I'm aware that yeah. I'm about to be different. Mm. Yeah. yeah. You know, and that gives people permission to interact with you on a different level. Let me, let me jump. Is anybody else want to get in on this before we jump to the next question? Please don't feel rushed about it. If you want to, I'll come on in. Could you quickly elaborate on the control piece of the three nuggets you gave? Uh, sure, I can. Okay, so in control means I'm in control of me. Okay, let me give a good example. If you are dating and you say you're celibate, and you're dating somebody and you start kissing and it makes you feel some kind of way and they feel some kind of way and then you let it go further than it was, immediately they know you're not in control. control. You <laughs> get it? And that's mm -hmm. just the physical control. That's not the yeah. mental control. That That's just, you. if you say you have rules, if you say you have a standard, if yeah. you say there's something you're not gonna do, by golly, don't do it. <laughs> If yeah. you're telling people, you know, because people are famous for saying, uh -huh. oh, you know, with you, it was just different. I've never done this before. Right. Right. You do I, this all the time. 
you do this all the time. So, so that's a part of it. I hope that answers uh, the short. It does. Answer. Thank you. You're more than welcome. Let me ask this question. Can you guys share with our listeners um, maybe how, how shame uh, prevented you from showing up, uh, mm -hmm. prevented you, because we kind of talked about that peacock. So tell me a moment of how shame prevented you from being that full peacock. You just kind of, just a little bit of a fan. <laughs> I couldn't do all of this. Tell me a little bit about that. And then we'll jump into that other one for our last little few minutes. I think being pregnant and not married and in church yeah. mm -hmm. um, made me really just be quiet. When God would say, stand up and praise the Lord, there it is. eight months, no husband, um, everybody knowing that I was sleeping with this guy in the church and now we, we have a baby coming. Um, mm -hmm. So I think that those were some times when I really just, you know, God would give me a word to share with someone and I would write it down and pass it to them mm -hmm. because I would, I would be so ashamed to get up to even go to tell them um, mm -hmm. or even go to the altar for prayer or anything I was just there very quiet very uh you know just almost like I'm pregnant and trying to hide that I'm pregnant and it's visible to everybody everybody let me ask this has everybody felt church hurt before Ooh. so everyone is saying is that every, that's pretty much everybody everybody is pretty much saying they've experienced church hurt isn't it interesting that the one place where we should feel safe where we should be able to be ourselves because the whole purpose of becoming a believer is to know that God's grace covers. Wow. I, you know, when, when I talked, when I wrote in my book about having an abortion, um, the judgment that I got from believers was the most detrimental to my spirit. Mm. Um, and if I can't come to believers, and, and bear my soul. I remember writing it in my book and my family was like, why would you put all of that in there? Because I was free. Because as a believer, I knew that his grace, it didn't just cover when I lied or when I smoked weed or, or when I was promiscuous. His grace doesn't selectively cover stuff. His grace yeah. covers it all. And so as a believer, you know, we have to really learn how to push past that in order to show up fully without shrinking in a room because of our past. I'm not living in my past and none of us are, but church hurt and church wounds can prevent people from going forward, from being bold or from speaking up, even when the Lord tells you to give a word to somebody, yeah. you know? And that's a sad reality when we don't even listen to the Arthur of us because we're listening to the people who he's mm. Arthur. Yeah. And y'all know my phrase, let a thing. Do be a thing. Yes, you can jump in. Yes, you um, can jump in. So when I was, um, I was uh, in church um, during a time that I was experiencing a tumultuous um, situation in my marriage. And um, it wasn't so much church uh, shame because the church actually embraced me tremendously. It was my um, survival, actually. It was, I believe, and I give this uh, testimony all the time that it was the love that I received from the church that got me through that time. That explains um, why you were, weren't one of the people who said you've experienced that church hurt. Right. Because the, the little things that have happened um, don't even mind. They, they don't even um, register. Compare. They don't mm -hmm. even compare to what I received. It, it truly mm -hmm. kept me alive. And so the, the thing that I wanted to bring up though, was the fact that I was in that time very angry with God because I had prayed and prayed that, that the Lord would do something to change that situation within my marriage, even to the place that when we would, you know, of course have praise and worship, I began to withdraw and just sit in the church. And I don't think I've ever shared this with anybody. I would just sit because I was angry, so angry with God. And I was all the other emotions too, depressed and ashamed and embarrassed and all of those things. And for a while, it was in my head because of God. And I was sitting there one day in all of my emotions yeah. and all of my feelings. And God said, do not rob me of my praise. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Do not rob me of my praise. Mm -hmm. And that changed everything. I got up in that moment and participated and began to praise God. Um, 
and that fell off and I was no longer um, angry with, with God. It was, more, it, it opened my eyes to the situation as a whole, but I just, I just wanted to share that because of the fact that it wasn't the, the saint sitting next to me. It was actually that relationship that I had with God that yeah. um, I was looking forward to that didn't come through the way I wanted it to come through. And so I withheld from him and that is definitely not the way to, to, to go. I, I, I want to touch on that because, and then we're going to move on, but it's so poignant because, you know, people come to church, they come and they hear the choir, they come and they hear the sermons, they come and they fellowship, but there's only one reason that God shows up to receive praise. And Absolutely. so if we come to church after praise and worship, we're, we're uh, not allowing him to get what it is we're really supposed to be coming for. The other stuff is for us, but the only thing that he comes for is for praise. Yeah. And so we have mm -hmm. to know, show up and give that. And so that segues into why it's imperative, yeah. why, why we can't walk around living in guilt and living in shame, which I believe they're cousins, distance cousins, but they're cousins. And we can't walk around living in that because when we're in that space, we're not available to be who he wants us to be for not only anybody else, but we're also telling him, you ain't make me right. You ain't make me right. And what I'm living right now is not where I'm supposed to be. And it's not what I'm supposed to do because if it was, I wouldn't be feeling the way I'm feeling. And he's like, wait, hold up. I'm going to use that. Yeah. I'm going to wring all of that out. That pain will help propel somebody else to purpose. So, so those, uh, those moments, I thank you, Rhonda, for, for dropping that in because yeah. it's imperative that we give him his due because in doing so, it, it frees us up to be available. And all we keep mm -hmm. saying every day is order my steps, right? But do we really mean that? Do we right, really mean right. order my steps? Do we really mean <laughs> Take me where I think I should be, <laughs> you know? So let me, let me ask these two questions and you guys can answer them. I want everybody to, to comment on them uh, in the last final few minutes of the show. One question, there's two, you can answer either one. One is what are you going to do to make sure you are in the arena and not mm -hmm. on the sidelines of your life? That's one. Second is if you can share any final thoughts to inspire, encourage other people to take the leap into being vulnerable. Mm -hmm. So um, I want to hear from everybody on one of those questions. Um, and you've got about three or three, two to three minutes each to kind of share on that before we close out the show. And I'm disappointed that we got to close out the show. So those are the two questions. What are you going to do to make sure you're in the arena and in the arena and not on the sidelines of your life? And then what are your final thoughts to inspire or encourage others to take the leap into being vulnerable? You know, I, I, when you, the first question, wow. And that's a big question, right? <laughs> yes. Um, and I, I, one of the things that I thought about as we were talking on the other talk uh, on the other um, question was uh, the difference between shyness and shame, right? I used to always think I was shy. But well, most people who know me would say, Tasha, you're not shy. <laughs> you're not. <laughs> but I would always, but there are times when I would find myself shrinking back, right? And I would say, it's just because I'm shy, right? And now I began to recognize that, no, Tasha, that shame. What you're feeling right now is shame. And so one of the things that I'm committed to do is calling that out when I feel mm. myself mm. shrinking back, right? Say, now, wait a minute, you're not being shy. This is shame. Where is that coming from? What are the, remember she talked about in the book, those gremlins, what are the gremlins telling you, right? What are the messages that you're hearing? And then what is the counter narrative to that, right? So when you hear the gremlins saying, uh, no, no, you don't have anything to say. You're not even smart enough to contribute to this conversation. You are a liar. I'm going to say what I believe is true. I'm going to put it out there and let them deal with what may, you know? Yeah. And so, 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 so that counter narrative, you're not enough. I am enough because mm -hmm. I serve a God, a big, great, powerful. It's not Tasha and herself is not anything, but Tasha uh, we was being led plus God. Thank you, Mara. You got it. Tasha plus God is 
everything, right? I talked oh, about being somebody, poor, oh, somebody. That, that whole being great. And, and you know, I, I like to do spin class and the, and the guy that I write with, he uh, ride with sometimes, uh, his name is Alex Tucson. He always says, certify your greatness, certify Ooh, your greatness. So I'm certifying it. my greatness mm. because I serve a great God. There is greatness in me, right? And so I'm going to do the work that uh, uh, that will allow me to flow within that greatness. And so that's the thing. I'm not shy. I'm that shame. And, and I come against that shame and I encourage everybody. So that would be my word to encourage people yeah. to, 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 to move forward against that shame. There, there are messages that you hear when you hear those <laughs> messages. Come yeah. back with that counter you gotta, narrative. You got to know how to hit yeah. mute on that thing. Yeah. And then, and then speak life to that thing. And, and Amen. Speak life, uh, yeah. You know, and for those that are listening in, y'all are hearing the Reverend Tasha. Jack, Jack. Say, See, we, know, we know <laughs> Tasha. We know Tasha from telling it like a T.I. is where she keeps it 100. Like she your sister friend who you grew up with. And then we know Tasha as the friend who comes in and speaks. But right now, and she is a true ordained Reverend, that is Reverend <laughs> Tasha. Yes. 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 Who just came in. Yes. Can somebody say amen? Amen. 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 All, right. <laughs> All right. So we're going to have Sharon come in and then we're going to go to Monica after her. Hey, I love that, Tasha. That is exactly, I think, the lesson that I'm learning. And, and Mara talked about the cousins, the guilt and the shame, and, and which one precedes which. Um, and we're not even talking about the humiliation piece that comes after the shame but when I think about guilt right I think of it as something that's ascribed to you like a verdict you're the innocent yes. or you're guilty right yes. but then it's the shame that follows and I feel like that's the internal piece that we that 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 we sort of foster and 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 and, and conjure up based on how we're rehearsing things or or even just our past um, and so for me with combating that shame, it's really, again, just affirming who I am. Think about Adam and Eve, right? When they were naked and ashamed, the very next question that God asked them, where are you? And I feel for me, for me to be present and in the arena, I have to be present. I can't allow that spirit of depression, that spirit of discouragement, that spirit of guilt, to cause me to shrink back and to coil up and to not be fully who I am. So it is reminding myself who I am. It is getting into God's word. And sometimes I don't even have the energy to crack open his, his, the Bible. But if it's meaning listening to, you know, praise and worship or taking doses of sermons on YouTube or just constantly rehearsing it until it gets in my spirit, um, that question of where are you just being reminded, I need to be present regardless of what I'm feeling. Yes, mm -hmm. that's real. That's right. Good. Yes. And an amen. And, 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 and it's, it's the reinforcement comes from rehearing, re mm -hmm. relearning, repeating. It mm -hmm. is a re, re, reminding. All of those words are how we get ourselves to be. And then we got to remember that the, the reason we, we trip up in situations is because we are looping a tape that we have heard in our past and we have played and we know that groove. Oh, we have listened to it. We know all the words to that song. And until we deprogram that and let something else come in, because we can't be of service for a God when we are caught up in ourselves. It is impossible to also be in depression when you are in praise mode. It's impossible. You can't be thankful and, and, and sad that you don't have something mm -hmm. at the same time. They can't exist. They can't. So, mm -hmm. Monica, go ahead. Let's have you jump in on this. Okay. So, uh, kind of piggybacking off some of the things that they just said and what you just said. For me, it is just very much like to stay in the arena of my life and not be on the sidelines. For me, it's just being mindful of all of these things. So, I believe in mantras. Like I speak mantras over myself, over my life. I used to write them down. Sometimes I still write them down, like next to my desk at work. I'll have something written on a post-it and I'll tape it to my desk so that I can see that and remind myself of that thing. And for me, it's things, phrases like I am enough. It's phrases like being intentional with my purpose. So living life on purpose, living life in purpose, on purpose. Absolutely. It's one of my phrases that I keep for myself. Yes. So it's, 
if I can stay with my head in the game, so like Sharon said, presence, if I can stay present and just continue to remind myself and speak life into myself and pray, you know, that God keeps my mind stayed on him and that God helps me to like, as the Bible says, the things that are good and the things that are prosperous to think upon those things and not allow the negativity to take root in my brain. So I learned um, a few years ago, maybe about se seven years ago, the importance of shutting out negativity before it takes root. Mm. Because once it takes root, it begins to grow. And once it begins to grow, it is way harder to chop down than it is if you catch it before it takes root. Mm. So I don't allow negative thinking any longer in my life i you just don't speak on it i just Love don't it. it's Love no it. for that there is a closed door to mm -hmm. negativity and That's that good. is a hallelujah and an amen <laughs> uh, let's go ahead and have crystal jump in on on this conversation i would say at this phase of my life and it's not just for me um it, it wouldn't be worth it if it's just me um my goal is to to impact myself and others as it relates to living fully right so I think that touches on what Sharon said, what Monica said, like we have to practice mindfulness. We have to actually be present to be here. And I think in a time when there's so much technology and all of these other things, you know, you, you do things out of habit. You drive home and you don't even know how you got there sometimes, right? But to slow down and be present with yourself enough to check on you, to, to be mindful of the blessings that you have, to be mindful of what hurt you, what bothered you and to work through that, I, I'm committed to being mindful, to being present, to slowing down and living fully. And I'm also committed to looking at the sisters around me, the, the men around me, the people that God has, has blessed me to be around, to remind them to slow down too <laughs> and to be mindful so we can live fully. I'm um, also to learn, like to learn daily. You know, there are all of these opportunities to learn. And that means that when I'm living fully, I'm going to be imperfect. I'm going to make those mistakes that Tasha talked about. But thank God for Jesus. And because he's so perfect, my imperfections with his perfection is a beautiful thing that helps other people overcome by the word of my testimonies of all of my mess, right? So I, I'm committed to learning like daily, just learning from those things. And then lastly, um, you know, the Bible talks about love covering a multitude of sins. He talks about love being the greatest of these things. So I'm committed to loving unconditionally, mm. no matter what. I'm going to mm. be stubborn about loving God. I'm yeah. going to be stubborn about loving other people. But that also means I have to be stubborn about loving me because I'm to love others as I love myself. But if I don't love me, then I can't love them in a way that they need to be loved and unconditionally. And if I don't love God, I can't love anything else. So I'm going to be stubborn about living fully, about learning daily and about loving unconditionally. And I hope that I can be around people and impact them in that way. And we can impact each other in that way. Love it. Love it. Love it. These nuggets and Avis, I'm coming to you next. You know, I'm coming. I need to just just say a couple of things. We need to celebrate our wins, right? We mm -hmm. need to know how to, yes. and not in a braggadocious fashion, but mm -hmm. how to pat yourself on the back when you've done a good job. Here's, we're really quick to criticize ourselves when we've done something incorrect Definitely. or feel judgment Amen. about it. So Definitely. we have to celebrate our wins. And, and, and as Monica was talking about her mantras, I have a couple of mantras that I, that I use. One is I try to live my life so full that others can have a sip from my saucer. Because mm -hmm. when I do that, that means I'm in overflow mode. That yeah. means that somebody can receive from the excess, the excess of, of what I have. And, and that's a good space to be in because now you're living not just for you, but for others too. Like and and, and y'all know the whole thing of being on the plane. If you don't put your oxygen mask on first, you, you, how are you going to help somebody else? And then you did. So you've got to, you've got to do that, which goes back to your self-care um, Crystal that you were just talking about. And then another um, thing that I, I believe I try to bring into it, and I don't try, I walk into a room with darkness pauses at my presence. So, so, so when you, when you know that you bring the light with you, there, mm -hmm. there, it's, it's kind of like, you know, I'm, I'm gonna get a little gross here, but I grew up in the ghetto and most people know that you turn on the light. What happens when you grow the up in the ghetto? Flee. The roaches <laughs> flee, they scatter, right? So, so if I show up and darkness <laughs> pauses at my presence, that means that bad spirit yeah. has to leave it, it or, or at least right. mute itself. 
it may it may mm -hmm. still be in the room but it's like okay i can't go gossiping around her because she gonna shut that down she's not gonna be she's not gonna give me an uh, ear to it which means it's no fun in gossiping when you don't get on the bandwagon y'all know that right okay go ahead let me let you come on in with this theme uh sister avis we're gonna let you bring this on home yeah uh -huh. yeah i think for me um it, I, I have the one word strength for the year right mm -hmm. and so it's like so i i took the scripture those who wait upon the lord will renew their strength period don't go any further. You know, we always want to get to the end, you know, so we can shout. But it's like that renewed strength to be able to do the things that God has called me to do, right? Because it's very contrary to what other people would do, right? Or it's very unique or out of the box thinking or it's my hood talk, right? Um, but just really uh, doing that. And this behind me uh, was a was a was a uh, picture that I put in my my bedroom, right? Stronger than ever. But as as the pandemic hit, and as people would, you know, I was like, I need to have something whenever I show up to anything that people understand and that I can pass on. And so for me, like in this season that I am much stronger than I ever could think I could be to, to really get to that place to achieve what God has called, called me to do. And then taking that, taking God's strength uh, along with my strength, right? Because you have some strength in who you are as a person, what you bring to the table, your thoughts, your insight, your intellect, all of that. And then putting God's strength on top of that and then just, just running, almost running with it. So, so this piece about, about having strength. And so I would leave that uh, with everyone that's here that you are stronger than you ever could even imagine or think that you can be. It's in there. It's like the pray go, open it up, let it out. You gotta open it up though. Let it it's out. There. <laughs> I love there. it. I love it. We're going to have Ava, I mean, uh, Rhonda, come on in behind this uh, and, and, and put your put your spin on it. And, and, and Ava, um, Rhonda, before you actually share, tell what your title is, your area of expertise, because I want them to understand. I want our listeners to understand uh, where your th thought processes come from be because of your education and your sphere of influence and your profession. Um, when you're speaking, I want them to hear who it is in which we're listening to right now. So mm -hmm. Rhonda, if you could share that, that would be great. Okay. I am a, um, I am a uh, encourager. I am equipper and I am an em empowerer um, to uh, especially young people. If you see most of the things that I've talked about is about young people. Um, and I'm a ER assessor. Uh, ah, yes, you Mara are. gave me that um that little tag there and i am an er assessor I, I believe in um uh helping people get through finding out what actually is causing people to to uh, not be able to to be their greatest um and to come in as a partner with them and and do that i'm a licensed uh professional counselor as well as a school counselor um go. and I'm, I'm glad you you brought that up as well because one of my things has been and always has been um that I still deal with is insecurity, the shame, and it, it feeds the insecure. I don't know which one came first, the chicken or the egg, the insecurity or the shame. I don't, I don't know. But the important thing is, is that I am, um, when I realize that sometimes I think differently, I have a, a very broad way of thinking about things. I'm very analytical. And so because of the fact that like when you're talking, I'm seeing all kinds of other things going on, um, so it's, it sometimes makes you feel different. And like Sharon was saying, you know, you kind of coil back. I coil away from, um, especially as I got older, began to, you know, kind of dummy down that type of, that part of my personality. Mm -hmm. But I'm committed to actually being bold. My thing is mm -hmm. just be bold, be different. I am fearfully and wonderfully made just like yeah. everybody else on this call. And that does not take, uh, because of the fact that I am the unique me, doesn't mean that I don't have a place in wherever it is that God puts me yes. in. And so therefore I encourage people to make sure that they are being bold. One of the things that I constantly deal with are the, the, the narratives, the things that I speak to myself. And uh, one of the things that I practice is to write those things down, just get out a pen and paper and begin to write down, what are you saying to yourself? What am I saying to myself and write that down and just see what that narrative is so that, you know, I always felt like if, if you know the name of it, yes. then you can defeat it. Yeah. And so it's just like cancer. People are afraid to say that they have cancer. No, call that thing out because it has a name and it has to bow to uh, of the power that 
to, to God that's greater than whatever that name is. Um, so um, to write those things down and what is the narrative that they're speaking and just be bold. Find those people that are going to um, uh, come beside you. And until you do depend on God to yeah. be that individual, be that spirit, be that person yeah. um, that's going to come beside you and help you to overcome those things yeah. and just be bold because we all have a place. Yeah. We are not here by accident. We're yeah. not on this call by accident. We're not at our jobs by accident. Yeah. God intended for you to be there for a purpose and be bold and, and do be yourself where, wherever you are. Amen. 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 I Love it. You know, I, I have a book out called Beyond Blessed. And the caption is, to speak to your point, uh, distractions have a name and purpose has a face. Once you identify the distractions in your life, you can more fully and completely walk in purpose. And with that being said, I want to do a round robin. I'm going to start with Crystal. Let the people know uh, where they can reach you. Either give a website or a handle to one of your social media pages that you frequent the most. And we're just going to do it in succinction real quick. So, Crystal. Awesome. Um, legacy underscore empowerment underscore solutions at IG. So that is the easiest place to reach me. Awesome. Monica. Mm -hmm. Hi, everyone. So I didn't mention I am a doula. And so you can find me at Mindful Maternity SS on Facebook, Instagram, and on Twitter. I'm MMSS doula. Great. Uh, Rhonda. Um, the website is coming soon. It is uh, Grasping the Basics. That's the name of my LLC. But until then, you can always email me at uh, graspingthebasics at gmail.com. Com, dot org is it dot org or dot com gmail y'all know up. which gmail it is dot oh, com, com. <laughs> Avis. yes i'm avis files and i um, am the uh coo of justice files um you can reach us at www.justicefiles.com you can look us up on facebook facebook justice files or you can email me avis deaf like so so deaf at gmail.com <laughs> awesome sharon I, I guess I need to level up. I don't have <laughs> a business, but um, Sharon Gordon Dyer on Facebook. Um, don't frequent it often, but I guess if you need to reach me, um, reach me there or reach more. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. And the good Rev, what, how, how can the people keep in touch with you? Yeah, so I'm just Tasha Jackson on Facebook. I'm Tasha Jackson on Instagram and I am Tasha Jackson on Twitter. <laughs> so it's very <laughs> simple. <laughs> All right. You guys know I'm Mara Gale, the host of OMG, the Omara Gale radio show. And I am forever grateful to this crew of Black Girl Brilliance, uh, a book club that actually has caused our meetings to be a safe space where we've been able to unpack all the things that have been in that suitcase stuffed, packed down deep um, because of some of the choice titles that the facilitator of the group, which is the good Rev, Tasha Jackson, um, she picks the books. And we unpack the books. And because of that, we built friendship and, and, and had a deeper commitment and relationship. So I wanna first say thank you to all of you for saying yes to be on OMG. I know that my listeners have benefited greatly from the wealth, the collective wealth of information, knowledge and transparency you shared today. So first, thank you, thank you, thank you. And now I'd like to thank you, my listeners, for tuning in, leaning in, and listening up to OMG. Of course, you can find me everywhere on social media at Mara Gale. And of course, my website is maragale.com. Please take a moment, go to uptomeradio.com. That is the umbrella under which this show is housed. Subscribe to my show page, which is OMG. There, once you subscribe, you'll be notified when my new shows are released and they're released every Thursday. So I'm excited. I hope you continue to ride with your girl because we, we're taking in 2021. We're gonna unpack a whole lot of things that are gonna benefit not only you, your household and prayerfully your community too. God bless you. Be well, be encouraged, wave or say goodbye to the people, you guys. All goodbye. Right. Bye. 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 Bye.